seated. And you can turn this down just a little, but uh, we are on, and we are in Matthew chapter 5 today. If you have your Bibles, I hope everybody has God's Word in their hand today. If you don't, we have some Bibles underneath most of the chairs in those little racks, so uh, look around in your area if you can't find one. You can get up and go get one, uh, but we want everybody to have God's Word in their hand this morning. If you don't own a Bible, we want you to take that home. That's our gift to you, so you can have God's Word in your hand. We're in Matthew chapter 5. I want to thank all of you for being so kind and gracious as it's our first week kind of moving all this stuff around so there's a little there's a, some glitches you've noticed so in the coming weeks Lord willing it'll all uh, it'll all be good amen uh, but it's like life right there's uh, glitches in life things happen uh, that are unplanned a few times every now and then are you with me uh, but that's where God comes in amen that's where God comes in to guide us to give us strength hey so uh, we're in Matthew chapter 5 we're going to look at being being light man the Lord has been laying this on my heart for the last really month uh, really strongly to be light to shine our light for all of us who have Jesus in our hearts to be his light in this dark world that we're in and today we are diving into verses 14 15 and 16 uh, in this Sermon on the Mount as we call it this is Jesus giving his first public teaching and we call it the Sermon on the Mount. He didn't call it that. Maybe he did. Maybe that's where it started. Maybe he said, hey, let's, let's call this the Sermon on the Mount. We don't, it's not in the Bible. That could have happened. But uh, you know, in Jesus' public ministry, he first started when he uh, went to the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights to fast, to pray, to prepare for this three and a half year ministry in public that he was going to have that changed the world. That literally changed the world, changed our calendars, changed everything. Amen? So uh, he prepared for that. He went to uh, the wedding in Cana where he did his first public miracle for his mom. You remember that? That's such a great story, isn't it? If you're not familiar with it, please look it up and read it where he's at this big wedding. They run out of wine. It's getting ready to be very embarrassing for the couple and their families and Jesus mom says he, it, it's so like and guys guys you can all say amen to this it's very much like like women like at least my wife like they won't actually ask you to do something but they'll say something and you'll do it <laughs> do I hear an amen now come on like my wife will be sitting there and she'll just say I'm hot well she didn't say turn down the AC she just said, I'm hot, but what do I do? I go turn down the AC. And that's, do I hear an amen, guys? <laughs> so ladies have a way, right? And Jesus' mom didn't say, Jesus, take care of this problem, right? Turn something into wine. They're, what does she say? They've run out of wine. That's all she said, right? And then what does Jesus say? Well, in our... I don't have the exact thing in front of me, but if he said it today, it would be something like, Mom. <laughs> How many of you still have an awesome, wonderful mom that's still mom, right? My mom called me last Saturday to remind me to turn my clocks back. <laughs> no lie. She does it every year. I'm like, Mom. <laughs> They're automatic now. <laughs> Not all of them. Not all of them. That one on the stove is never automatic for some reason. But, uh, you know, the story is such a wonderful story. And, and Jesus says, it's not my time yet. I'm, that's not, I'm not here to entertain people. I'm not here to fix all those physical problems. You know, that's kind of what he's getting at. He's here to fix the heart problems. Amen. That's why he came. And then, and then Jesus' mom goes, Call somebody over here. Do whatever he says. Do whatever he says. It's such a great story. And then we come to this Sermon on the Mount. Jesus has called some of his disciples. And uh, if you read uh, at the beginning of chapter 5, uh, which we're not going to get into because we just want to focus on 14, 15, and 16. But Jesus goes up on the mountain. His disciples come up kind of on the front row to, to listen intently as his students, as his disciples but large crowd, thousands of people are gathering around who want to be his followers. 
And so he says this to them. So follow along with me. This is Matthew 5, verse 14. God's word says this. Jesus says this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We're going to stop right there. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to be a shining light for you in this dark world. Help us today to be a brighter light, Lord. Speak to us through your word. Speak to us as you are with us, Lord, here uh, where we are gathered in your name. Uh, speak to us. Draw us closer to you. Make us that shining light to point people to you. And we ask all this in Jesus' name and all God's people say, amen, amen. Hey, so first things first, Jesus is speaking to the multitudes, but he's directly speaking to his disciples and those who want to follow him. So uh, if you go back to verses 1 and 2 of chapter 15, uh, it says, uh, Seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. He was seated with his disciples. They came to him, and then he opened his mouth and taught them. So what Jesus is getting at here right away, that if you follow Jesus, if you want to be his disciple and you believe in him and you receive him into your heart, then you are the light of the world. So I've got a few, just a couple slides here. I hope you take some notes. Point number one, we must receive the light, which is Jesus, to be the light. Can I say that again? We must receive the light, which is Jesus, to be the light. Okay, this seems fairly elementary at first, but you'd be surprised at how many people call themselves Christians. They think they're going to heaven, but they've never believed and received Jesus Christ. If you haven't believed and received Jesus Christ, you are not the light, because he's the light. And you can only be the light if you receive him into your heart. Uh, because you aren't a disciple, if you are not uh, following him, it, you cannot have the light in you until you believe and receive him. So I want to give you three key points this morning. If there's anybody here who's unsure today if the light of Jesus, if he himself is in your heart. So let me give you these three keys today. And these are really the three biggest keys that I could give you uh, in the 11 years I've been here uh, to, to be sure that you have the Lord in your heart and that you are the light of the world. Key number one, <clears throat> we have all sinned. Do we understand that we have all sinned? Romans 3.23 says that. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all know that. We are born into sin. It's why we don't have to teach our children how to do anything bad. Has, is there anybody who has ever had to teach your child, listen, <clears throat> listen, child, I know you've never lied and you have no idea what lying is. So I'm going to teach you. We don't have to teach him that. Isn't that amazing that the bad stuff <clears throat> is just in there and we have to teach him how to be good, right? That's, the, that's the, just the very essence of being born into sin. Furthermore, we've all sinned as each day passes, each week, each month, each year. Can you imagine uh, whatever age you are, how many sins, if you counted them up, how many sins w would that be in a, in a pile or in a total or what the number of that would be? Jesus forgives them all. Amen? Wow. We, we should never get over the awesomeness of the good news of Jesus Christ, dying for our sins, forgiving us for our sins. So number one, we need that. We've got to understand we've all sinned. Uh, number two, uh, in this key that I'm giving you, the penalty for sin is eternal death. It is separation from God. In a word, it is hell. That's, that's the wages of sin. Romans 6, 23, the first part of that verse. Most of you are familiar with that, I hope. The wages of sin is is death, and that's talking about eternal death. That's not just physical death. Everybody dies whether they're forgiven of their sins or not forgiven of their sins. That's a physical death, but this is speaking of a spiritual death, an eternal separation from God. Literally, that is hell. Our God is holy. He is sinless, and no sin can enter into heaven. 
Can't wait for that place. Are you with me? Can't wait for a place where there's no traffic. Can't wait for a place where there's nothing wrong. Amen? There's, nobody does anything wrong. There's no sin. There's no unrighteousness. There's no, no bad people. There's, nothing, there's nobody cutting you off in traffic. Do I hear an amen? Maybe some of you are feeling the same way I am this morning. That, but man, heaven is a holy, sinless place. We can't get in on our own. But that brings us to our third key, the most important one. When we believe and receive Jesus, our sin is forgiven and we are saved. The rest of Romans 6.23, yes, the wages of sin are death, but, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to read to you Romans 10, 9 and 10. Hope you are familiar with that, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's as simple as that. Amen? It's really simple. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So please catch this, one of my favorite verses in God's word, John 14, 6, where Jesus says, if you know it, say it with me. I, Jesus says, I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father in heaven except through me that's what jesus says in john 14 6 as believers we are called to be light in this dark world but the light comes from having a relationship with god through jesus christ we do not have the light just because we're good just because we're a member of some church or denomination or just be, because, because, because we can have that list all the way down the road. We, we, we have the light in us because we believe and receive Jesus and his forgiveness for our sins. Amen? That's when we have the light. You don't get the light of Jesus in your heart just by being good, just by going to church, just by being a member of some place. Uh, I've told a story several times of a young man named John Seden who uh, uh, was at uh, in Port St. Lucie. I was over in Port St. Lucie for 10 years before coming here as a pastor, and somebody called me up from my church uh, on a Saturday morning and said, hey, my, my niece and her husband are getting ready to get a divorce. They got the papers in their hand. They're just ready to do it. I talked them into waiting just a few minutes if you would come and talk to them. And I said, Sure. <laughs> I'll come talk to him. You never know. And man, am I glad I did. Because the Lord, not me, as I sat there and talked with them, they were ready to change their hearts. Uh, and I sat there for just a few minutes and I asked them what happened. And somebody was unfaithful and they were, they were done. They were just done. And so I, I said, you know, really, I could tell you a lot of different things and books and seminars and counseling and all this stuff but really what you need is Jesus because Jesus can solve any problem you have and so I just laid out the gospel the good news like I just laid it out for you and I said really that there's really nothing else I can do to help you except give you Jesus Christ but he can help you overcome anything and so I said let me pray and we prayed and then I stood up and I you know, I'm like, you know, that's all I got. Uh, it's the main thing, but that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm giving. And I said, so if you want to talk to me later, if you want to call me or whatever, here's my card. And I said, you can call me anytime. I, I'll counsel with you, I'll, whatever. And I started to walk out, and John said, well, is there any reason why we can't receive Jesus right now? And I'm like, no, I don't think there is. <laughs> I said, is that what you want to do? Because this is a big deal, you know? And he said, yeah, that sounds like exactly what we need to do. And his wife said the same thing. She's like, yeah, I think we need Jesus, and let's do it. And so we prayed. They asked the Lord into their hearts, and they started reading their Bible every day. They started praying every day together. They came to church. I met with them several times. They just helped through some issues. 
And wow, baptized them a few months later. Ju just an awesome thing that go only God can do. Are you with me? That only God can do. But he can do anything. He can overcome anything. That's him. That's who he is. And when we're talking about us as believers being the light, it's not because we're so talented or we're so smart or we're so great. It's because he's all that and more. He is everything everybody needs. He is the light. But to be the light, we have to receive the light. In John 16, 33, uh, Jesus gives this awesome statement. John 16, 33, Jesus says, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. I mean, he just, he just says it. In the world you're going to have tribulation. That's life. Life will throw things at every single one of us. Some of us, or, or some of the time, we get ourselves into it. Okay, let's just be honest. But then some of the times, it, we didn't do anything wrong. And just something, you know, an illness or, or whatever, something hits us, that's, that's life. That's the sin-filled world we live in. But praise God, Jesus didn't just stop right there. He said, in the world you'll have tribulation. But what else did he say? Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I've overcome everything that you will face in the world. Everything and anything. And that's why I love to quote Philippians 4.13, and I'll quote it again, and most of you know it because I've been quoting it for a long time. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you believe that? Amen, amen, amen. So point number one, to be the light, we have to receive the light. So let's get that clear right away. I want to go to point number two. To be the light equals be a river, not only a reservoir. And you've heard me, if you've been here very long, you've heard me say this before. This is one of the, the hardest things in life to do because we love receiving from the Lord. Uh, whether it's on a Sunday morning or whether it's in our home, reading his word, praying. We love receiving from the Lord and we should. But he doesn't want us to just receive all of this goodness and greatness and all the things that he blesses us with and hold on to them like a reservoir that fills up and holds on to the water he wants us to be that river to flow in us and through us uh, again those first two verses are so important in matthew 5 14 and 15 that we read let me read them again you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden okay Verse 15, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, okay, but on a lampstand, so it'll give light to all who are in the house. Remember in Jesus' day, there was no electricity. We all in this area know what it's like not to have electricity. Oh, my goodness. So they had lamps, and some of us had lamps, right? We don't, especially at night when you have a lamp and that's all you have, and a lot of us sat around a lamp or a candle. Raise your hand if you did that uh, last fall. Yeah, so what do you do with that light or that lamp? Do you put it on the floor? No. You put it on the table. If you had something higher, you'd put it up higher. The higher the light goes, the more it shines. Amen? Amen? That's what Jesus is getting at here. What does he say? Nobody puts a, 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 a lamp under a basket. Nobody covers it up. Don't hide what I've given you, in other words. Let people know. Shine your light. I love the part of our Christmas Eve service. We have a candlelight uh, part of it at the end of our Christmas Eve service where we all have our own candle and we all get in a big circle on Christmas Eve and uh, I start with one lighted candle and man it's amazing when you turn all the lights out and it's totally dark how bright one candle can be and that really signifies every single one of our lives matters it matters each one of us can shine our light to somebody who Nobody else could, whether it's a neighbor or a coworker or a friend or whoever. And just one candle makes a big difference in a, in a dark room. And then we pass the light around the circle, and man, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And then one, one thing we do is we say, okay, now let's hold the light down as low as you can. 
and boy, the light in the room just comes way down. Now let's hold it up high. When we hold it up high, of course, the light is really bright. That's our life in Jesus Christ, amen? That's our life in Jesus Christ. No one takes that lamp and puts it under a bushel. Don't hide the light of Jesus that is in you. Shine his light. Don't let it just flow in you. Let it flow through you. We get this picture of a reservoir, uh, a stream or a river. Rain comes into the reservoir. Some of you have probably been hearing about the reservoirs and the lakes uh, out west that were in a, a, such a big drought. We were watching uh, YouTube videos on how bad it was getting some of the some of them had to shut off their turbines if it was a dam you know and making energy because it got so low but what happened recently they had all these big rainstorms and now they're filling back up and so what's that mean that means it's good for everybody downstream are you with me that reservoir is not doing anybody any good unless it flows out that's such a great picture of our life we need god to fill us up each day each week we read our Bibles, we pray, we go to church, we learn, we grow, and we want God to then take all those wonderful things and let them flow through us to others. That's shining your light. Verse number six, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And then what? Not, not say, hey, you're awesome, right? Or hey, I'm awesome, but glorify your Father in heaven. That's what our good works, our lives do and should do, bring glory to Jesus. I want to give you point number three. This is just our final point today. All the things we say and do are for God's glory. Our, our job, our responsibility is not to make our name famous, but to make his name famous. Amen? Amen? Does anybody know uh, the verse that is on that banner that's standing right beside the coffee. Would anyone like to shout that out? Anybody know what the verse is? Now here's a reminder. It's there every Sunday. <laughs> it's been there, woo, seven years, eight years. Anybody know that verse? I know it, you're probably distracted because at the top it just says coffee, right? But then it has a verse at the bottom. Anybody? Anybody? Jeff, you're sitting right by it. You can't raise your hand. <laughs> it's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So now you know. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Even if you're drinking coffee, you can do it to the honor and glory of God. If you're mowing your grass, if you're washing your dishes, if you're walking your dog, whatever, I mean, the littlest things. God's word says, a cup of cold water given in my name will not go unnoticed or unrewarded. God sees, God knows. Every, every little kindness and graciousness and thing, we, even the, the things that I just mentioned and others that we may think are really no big deal, we can give God honor and glory if we do it for him and for his honor. Uh, the things we say matter. The things we do matter. We never want to say anything or do anything that would push someone away from Jesus. As a Christian, as a believer, our responsibility is to, to draw people to Jesus. And in in everything we say and everything we do, we want to pull people to Jesus, to show people Jesus, to be, as God's word says, his hands and his feet as the body of Christ. I mentioned uh, our Christmas Eve candlelight service uh, already, but the power of one light, when we just light that first light and we turn all the lights off, and we have one candle in this big room, it, it's pretty bright. Don't ever underestimate what God has called you to do, no, whether you're young, whether you're old, or somewhere in between. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your circumstance is, God can still use you. God uses us most powerfully when we're in the most difficult situations and we still can give him glory. Because it's easy when things are going well 
to give God the glory and to say all the right things and do all the right things. Are you with me? But when things are not going well, when, things, when, when we're in pain and when we're struggling, if we can still say, as Job said, who went through more than anyone went through, to God be the glory. God giveth, God taketh away. To God be the glory. Amen? Would you bow your heads with me and we're going to close with a word of prayer. But just before we do, I want to pray for you. So please right now with every head bowed and every eye closed. Uh, if there's anyone here who is unsure if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you have received the light of Jesus, I want to pray for you right now with no one looking around just between you and God and me so I can pray for you. But if that's you, as I talked about at the beginning, we, we can't be the light if we haven't received the light. So if that's you today and the Lord is moving in your heart and you're, you're ready and you're like, you know what, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to receive forgiveness for my sins, to, to start anew and afresh in a walk with the Lord. Please just raise your hand for a moment so I can see it and I will pray for you. Say, Pastor Tim, by raising your hand, please pray for me. I want to receive Jesus. Anyone at all? Amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else, before we go any further, just raise your hand and say, Pastor Tim, pray for me. I want to receive Jesus before we go any further. All right. Hey, and for the rest of us this morning, would you, who are already believers, would you pray as I play on this keyboard, respond to the Lord right now in these few moments. We're not going to take a lot of time, but don't miss this moment right now. To, to just do some business with the Lord and ask him how you can be a brighter light. And then I'll close in just a minute. Father, thank you so much for all you've done. You've done so much for each one of us. Heavenly Father, help us not to hold it in. That's not what you want. You don't want us just receiving from you and, and not passing all your goodness, all your love on to others. Lord, no matter what situation we are in, we can still praise you. We can still honor you because you love us so much thank you for being with us Lord thank you for being so faithful such a faithful friend our Savior our sanctifier our healer our coming King and our best friend Lord we praise you we thank you help us to pass your light on to others in Jesus name we pray and all God's people said Amen, amen. Hey, thank you for coming, everybody. God bless you. Go in peace.